Hi there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Duster Sea channel for part 2 in my Sky Hero Anakin build series. Now this is what I left you with in the previous video. Um, well actually <laughs> I've already installed two motors as you can see because I just couldn't help myself. And um, yeah in this video we'll be having a close look at the motors and ESCs I've selected for this build. I'll show you the details. And we'll also do a bench test or several bench tests with the setup I have selected. And this is that setup that I have selected. An DIS Fire 2300 kV motor 2206 and DIS XS 30 amp BL Heli S ESCs. All right, let's have a closer look at uh, the motor first. All right, the DIS Fire Racing Edition or Racing Series, as you can see here. And uh, I have the 2300 kV version. They are also available in 2100 kV and 2600 kV. And uh, they are all 2206 motors. So quite a large uh, stator these motors have. Now they come in this uh, nice plastic box so your motors are well protected in transit and um, yeah, yeah of course you can uh, use these boxes afterwards to um, store your screws of a built-in or other spare parts and um, let's see they come with a uh, prop wrench Every motor comes with this metal prop wrench, very nice. They come with two prop nuts in the same color as the motor themselves. And they come with eight mounting screws, uh, four 5mm screws and four 7mm screws. So you're good to go with, uh, I'd say, two 3mm frames and four maybe 5mm frames. 5 mm? No, up to 4 mm frames in thickness. So, um, yeah, that's, that's very nice that they provide you with 8 screws. That's nice. Okay, let's then have a closer look at the motor itself and I'll try and compare it with a budget motor. A Racer Star, and this is a 2205, so a 1 mm shorter stator. And this is also a 2300 kV motor. Um, so uh, let's see, yeah, this DIS motor uh, costs around, what is it, 18 dollars? Maybe a little, no, sorry, 18 euros. And this Racer Star motor is around 7 euros, I think. So the DIS motor is two and a half times as expensive. Yes. Now, hard to say from the looks of it what uh, makes up this price difference. One of the biggest differences is this prop shaft. On the DAS motor it's a hollow shaft as you can hopefully see. And it's a metal shaft. On the Racer Star motor it is an aluminium prop shaft. And it is not hollow. Now, you might think, well, isn't a hollow shaft weaker? No, it isn't. Um, I won't be explaining why, but a hollow structure is generally uh, more sturdy, uh, uh, more resistant to bending. And it is a metal shaft as well. Um, yeah, the Racer Star motor has a solid top, as you can see. This one has vent holes at the top. The Racer Star Motors has its vent holes on the side. Yeah, which is better? Hard to say. Okay, at the bottom, here is a bigger difference. Um, as you can see, the Racer Star Motor on the right has a C clip holding the, uh, the axle in place. Uh, and on the left, the DIS motor has a little screw. Uh, which is screwed into that uh, that axle. That's a, also a benefit of that hollow axle. Uh, you can uh, secure it, as DAS did, with a screw. 
Um, why is that better? Well, a C-clip um, has the, at least the possibility of unbalancing your motor. Um, it can have a slop after a while. Or it can rub onto uh, the bearing and uh, yeah, wear it off after time. And let's see, yeah, the, well, they, they both have a normal mounting, hole spacing, no benefit to the DAS motor in that. Um, in this video, by the way, I won't do a shootout in, uh, in specs or uh, bench testing between these two motors. This is a 2205 motor, this is a 2206 motor. So that wouldn't be fair and wouldn't be really useful data, I think. Um, if you are interested in a bench test of the DIS, this is a BR2205 motor from uh, uh, Racerstar. Uh, if you want to see a bench te test of that motor, I'll uh, do one as well. And uh, let's see, oh yeah, um, one thing to note, this screw holding on to the axle, if you want to surface these motors, this screw is held, held on with red Loctite, I think. So it's very hard to get out. And what you do, if you want to take it out, heat up this screw with a soldering iron, and then that'll uh, make the uh, Loctite malleable, fluent, I don't know. But uh, well, uh, like I said, heat it up, heat up the screw up, then you can take out the screw. Okay, um, so much for the motor. Yeah, both, as you can see, come with leads. That's nice. The DIS motor comes with slightly longer leads. Yeah. Okay, and one more thing I would like to know about these DIS motors is their weight. So let's have a look. They are for 32 grams. So, yeah, for what it's worth, with leads, without proper adapter. So, so much for the motors. Let's now have a look at our ESCs. The DIS XS30A speed controllers. Uh, I guess the XS stands for extra small, and they are indeed very, very small, as you can see from my hands. And they support uh, one shot 42, one shot 125, and multi shot, very nice. And they run a BL Heli S firmware. Excellent, that's what you want at this moment. And at the motor side of things, they only come with soldering pads, so no wires. That's alright with me. And on the PDB side, they do come with wires, as you can see. Okay, uh, these ESCs come with this plastic encasement in which you can mount them. Um, I'm not sure if I will. Um, they are, of course, well protected in those cases. That's nice, and I do appreciate DAS uh, shipping them with the, with the ESCs, but they will add a little weight as well. Um, they also ship these ESCs with two, hmm, might be hard to see, but uh, two pieces of shrink wrap. So after soldering on your motor wires you can uh, shield those soldering tabs with this shrink wrap. So yeah, that's nice. Or maybe in case you need to uh, get rid of the original shrink wrap, you can replace it with the supplied shrink wrap. Okay, and let's have a look what these weigh. These XS30 ESCs weigh in at 8 grams. And with that plastic case, well, that hardly weighs anything. Okay. Well, oh, my skill has reconsidered. 2 grams for the case. Yeah, all right, two, two grams for the case. Okay, well, um, I'll sleep on it if I want to use these uh, cases. Yeah, might be something uh, to consider. They are a, a good protection for the ESCs. You'll have less airflow over the ESCs as well with these cases, of course. Okay, 
so much for what things look like. Okay, so much for the specs and what things look like. Let's do some bench testing now. Okay, what do we have here? Well, we have a thrust stand or a thrust meter. And at the front over here we have a scale on which I have secured the fire motor, the DIS fire motor. Over on this side you see the ESC enclosed in its plastic casing, um, mostly uh, to uh, prevent uh, any kind of uh, shorting out on this uh, metal clamp over here. And on the fr at the front of this frost stand you have a few displays which we'll have a look at in a minute. Okay, so I'll do uh, two tests, one on uh, 3S with a Diatone 6T45 propeller, a two-blade bull nose, as you can probably tell. Why? Well, because I test most of my motors with this propeller, uh, at least with, uh, also with this propeller at 3S. So a 6T45 propeller at 3S and I have a, a King Kong 3-blade 5045 and we'll test the motor setup on 4S with this propeller. So um, ah, yeah, it's also good to note that I'll be using lipos that are far bigger than needed. So we won't be testing the lipo. The lipo will be able to provide more than enough power. That's always important in tests like these. So let's get things hooked up. Okay, throttle input is on, scale on. I hope the displays will be visible for you, but I'll uh, put the outcome of this test on screen as well. There we go, 3S connected. And here we go. Oh, um, I'll be keeping a close eye on the amps, of course, because it's a 30 amp ESC. We don't want to cook the ESC. And uh, this display over here will show us the amount of thrust. Okay, let's get it on. Okie dokie, um, huh. that is quite a bit more frost than I was anticipating. Um, almost 1100, close to 1100 um, kilos of frost, uh, grams of frost, sorry. <laughs> 1100 kilos of frost, yes sir. No, um, almost 1.1 uh, kilo. And we did uh, go over 30 amps over here. Uh, do remember that it is, this is a, a static thrust uh, meter. Um, you won't ordinarily be drawing this much power while flying your quadcopter. A and obviously those ESCs can take more than 30 amps for a short period of time. So 30 amp. And um, I'll take the maximum wattage out of the video. I haven't taken a closer look, uh, close look at those. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll put all the data on screen for you so you can take a closer look at that. Um, as you can also see, the scale is not has not reverted back to zero. Yeah, that's a common thing with these thrust stands. Uh, they have to uh, spring back over time. That's the 6 inch prop at 3S, let's get the 5 inch prop on there. Okay, same story, servo tester on, scale on and let's connect up to LiPo. Again, 5 inch prop, 4S, here we go. <laughs> Hot damn. Okay, uh, this clearly is a more efficient setup. Um, 
below 30 amps, 28.8 amps maximum, and we got to around 1200 grams. Good stuff. So yeah, probably I will be doing most of my flying with this uh, setup, a uh, 5 inch propeller on 4S. And I'm not sure what the maximum wattage was, again I'll put that on screen uh, for you right now. I'll get everything disconnected and then we'll uh, do a short recap of things. Okay, that's uh, it for the bench tests of the motor setup I'll be using on my Anakin build. Especially on uh, 4S uh, with these King Kong 3 blades. Very nice amount of thrust, over 1200 grams, I'm happy about that. And at 3S with the 6 inch propellers, yeah, will make for a pretty powerful FPV cruising setup. Which is what I'd also like for this quadcopter. So, yeah, in the next video we'll be taking a close look at the PDB with OSD I'll be using. And I'll show you how to set that up. How to connect everything and how to configure it. So that'll be coming up in the coming days again. For now, thank you very much for watching. Hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. And hope to catch you on the next video. Bye bye.